Hey, what's going on? Marco here, Never Case the Mondays. And today I'm going to give you just one of the ways that you can overcome an objection, uh, which is the biggest one, the money thing, right? And uh, you can feel good about this. You can, it's duplicatable and you can really help interrupt people's patterns and limiting beliefs, which keeps them struggling. And this is so valuable. So uh, you can use my story because this is what I use sometimes. And, um, and then, you know, I'll give you some later, but here's a good one. And you're going to remember this. And it's always important to break into metaphors and stories because that's the only thing they're going to remember, okay? So, um, you know, when people give me the, the money objection, I always kind of give them the, the, the car analogy, which is, I say, you know, I'll give you an example. There was these two personal uh, trainers that thought it was a good idea, right? They wanted to join our primary business. They were all excited. They're like, man, you know, I, I want, yeah, that's a good idea. I just don't have any money. I said, guys, it, it really doesn't have anything to do with money. Okay, it has everything to do with your mindset and resourcefulness. Um, and I said, you know, can I give you an example? And and remember, you always want to you always want to kind of get permission and ask questions, right? And like, anytime you want to tell somebody something, try to remember this. Make it a question instead. I say, you know, if you want something, you got to come up with the money, right? Instead, of, if you want to tell them you need to come up with the money, make it a question. Hey, if you want something like that, you, you would have to come up with the money, right? To, you know, right? And you go like that. Get them in a pattern of doing this a couple of times and it's going to lead to the big yes. So I said, so listen, you see that car out front? They saw my car before they came into the building. And, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice car. It's a Range Rover with, you know, all fancied out with the rims and stuff. I said, look, man, if I was to give you the keys to my car and give you the title and everything and trade you, you come up with $2,000 by tomorrow, would you do it? And they go, yeah, of, of course. I said, wait, well, you just said you didn't have any money. Um, what would you do to get that money? And then I, I said, you know, you'd probably borrow from 10 different people, you know, rob, steal, sell your cow, sell your TV, because you know the value of, of what that can bring you, the value of coming up with that money. You know, you can drive around that car for six months, sell it later for 50000 or whatever. The value, you know, what, what, you're, what you're holding valuable, right? So I said, see, so that, that means you just said you come up with the money. It's just how important it is. Is, is it to you, right? So it has nothing to do with, money it's it's everything to do with your mindset re, your resourcefulness being resourceful now now tell me guys what would having money do for your life what would that mean for you and i pause and make them think about it and, you know and, and that way it's getting them to dream again bringing back those dreams that they forgot because people kind of sometimes have to forget about their dreams to you know to uh just reality right shrink their dreams to match the income so you got to dream back, get back their dreams because here's them, here's their dreams, but they have this obstacle in the middle, right? And if you build up those dreams, then they can see their dreams without that obstacle in the way, okay? So you have to build that up. Tell, tell me what you do with, it, with all that money, right? And how important it is, is it to, to, for you to get that? Okay, awesome. Well, then let's, you know, how long have you been in that situation where you're letting money hold you back from all your dreams how long have you have you been in the situation where you don't have a thousand or two laid in the bank and you get them you know you kind of press on the pain humans move away from pain at any cost right kind of like deer they don't have to think about it it's instinctive any danger immediately move away and that's built into this into the subconscious 30,000 times more powerful than your regular conscious mind the, the conscious the unconscious mind subconscious makes all your decisions you make you make decisions based on emotions okay so you, you can talk about stories on how you used to feel the same way, you used to grind it out, hate your boss, press on that pain a little bit, tell your story, and then invite and say, now look, what would you do, you know, is it worth it to you to to never, what would you do to never be in that situation where you don't have a thousand bucks ever again, where you never have to worry about how much it costs, you can get your kids to college, you can, you know, take vacations when you want and not be told what you're worth and when you can go take a piss right when you can go on lunch what would that mean for you how bad are you willing to do that uh you know yeah i mean how serious are you are you, are you just talking or are you serious you want to change your situation no i'm serious okay let's set a deadline humans make deadlines um you know i'll know you're serious and i'd be willing to put that time into you to teach you some of this stuff if you come up with the money to start a business now when can you and you and you, you learn, lose use language patterns now when See, if you ask now when, you slipped in the word subconscious now before when. So it automatically tells them, oh, now, right? So now when, 
would it be a good time for you to make that change and come up with their money? You know, they kind of plants that seed. Okay, so let's call you tomorrow, and I want to see if you can come up with some ideas because, look, you can sell that TV. You can sell that couch. Those are material, material things. And if you know you're going to do the work, you're going to get the money, you get your couch back, get another bigger TV later. I use always, I, sometimes I use a story about how my friend used, you know, he sold the most important thing to him, which was his motocross bike to get the money to start its business. And then he went and bought a brand new motocross bike less than nine months after that. Okay, so just you can use those stories and stories and metaphors, right, to use that. So let's talk tomorrow. It's uh, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, okay? Okay, perfect. I'm going to call you tomorrow, see what you came up with. And then that way you, you don't have to waste time. You can weed them out. If they didn't do what you said, cool. But you, you can, you know, you can get, that's what you call gapping them, say. Uh, also, in the meantime, I would go get that book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and make sure you read it inside the next week. And, we, and you can set that for another follow-up, too. And that way you're kind of touching them because the average person doesn't sign up. They, they need about five to eight exposures, touches, before they're actually going to join up in a business. And in the meanwhile, you're keeping them warm by keeping in touch with them uh, and getting those ideas rolling, right? So uh, hopefully that was valuable. Use that if you like. I'm gonna, uh, keep, you know, I'm going to give you a couple more really good, valuable things that you can use to overcome that money objection. But uh, if that was valuable, share it, like it, um, you know, leave me a comment. If you have any questions, hit me up uh, at the end of this video too, or, you know, uh, in the description or right at the end, there's a link uh, I'm going to give you. they will send you to a full blog post where there's even more value and showing you how to duplicate, uh, overcome those objections at limiting beliefs and breaking patterns. Okay. Uh, interrupting the patterns with people. So hopefully that was valuable. See you on the next one. Later.